Hi, Bill Parrish here with GTT Audio and Video and here to talk today about the Key 3 loudspeaker system. This is a fully active loudspeaker system, of course system, two speakers, each speaker 1500 watts. What you have is six drivers in each speaker. You have a, tw you have a tweeter, a mid-range, two side firing woofers and two rear firing woofers each one with its own 250 watt in-core amplifier and so it's, it's 1500 watts per speaker each speaker has its own D to A converter in it each con speaker has its own A to D converter in it and it has its clock circuitry for timing between the two you can take analog input, XLR analog input into the speakers and now you've got what I would say is the world's finest powered speaker system. We could end that video right here and the keys would go down in history as the finest loudspeaker, powered loudspeaker system there is. But it's so much more than that. What we have is a cardioid base array just like a cardioid mic, it's very directional. And what Bruno Putzies has done is develop the DSP in the speaker with the cardioid base to allow the, the base to build up. It goes about 20 inches on each side of the speaker and then towards the listener. So it's a directional base as opposed to 360 degree base like every other speaker in the world. And then this wall is always the biggest problem in stereos, especially when you're talking about rear firing woofers, but not with these. What these do is this cardioid base, directional, I've already told you, uh, goes towards the listener. It takes this wall out of the equation, but there's a boundary switch on the back that allows you to dial in the proximity of where it is to the wall. So this speaker can sit within four inches of this front wall and it takes this wall out of the equation. We can get, we can place it out in the middle of the room and just dial in the switch. I think there's 13 different detents on this switch in the back. It's a little rotary switch. 13 different detents from in a corner of a room, on a wall, or freestanding and everywhere in between. And there's also an EQ curve. We always run it flat. Except for at times we've been able, where we've been at trade shows and in hotel rooms, and at the hotel rooms they're notorious for being bad, and we've had to knock the top end down a little bit or get rid of a mid bass bump so we could be linear and flat in the room. The speaker has that control in the back. So as I said, you know, the finest, probably the world's best active loudspeaker system. But again, so much more. Because how do you get the signal into the speakers? I mean, right now, from what I've described, it simply replaces your power amps and your speakers. But you still need sources. You need now, how, how do we get the the signal into the speakers? Well, there's two ways of doing it. Well, there's three, but we'll tell you about the third last. There's there's two ways of doing it, and uh, analog in. You can do it from a preamplifier. You know, take 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 your preamplifier, run XLR analog input into each speaker plug all your sources into that preamp, do your switching and volume, con volume control with the preamp. No problem at all. Works just fine. You also, and, and this, is, this is sort of a tricky part, e either or, you, you could decide that you're going to feed it digitally, which is the way that most people have been doing it. And you feed it digitally via an AES EBU cable. And then you jump from one speaker to the other with an Ethernet cable. Just one becomes a master, the other becomes a slave. Very fine. 
except for what sources give you an AES ABU output. And then how do you control it? Up to now, we've had a great solution. We've had, well, the solution USB to AES EBU converter. Fantastic piece. Adds $4,000 to the cost of the speaker system, but fantastic piece interface between the computer and the key. USB into the solution interface. AES EBU into the key. It's been great, but it hasn't been the solution that we've really been looking for because how do you control the volume? You know, you're sitting there with a Mac computer or a PC computer into this, and then you're doing the, the digital volume control on the slider. And while it works and it's great, now the speaker is tied to a single source and you're sitting there with a software volume control and it's been terrific. We've sold a lot of them. People love the keys. It's been written up. Best, uh, best sound at the show every time it's been at the show. I mean, it's just been praise after praise after praise. But now it gets better. Since the inception of the Key 3, it's always intended to be a key system. And it's uh, been a little, uh, well, it's been a big, long process for us as we've been selling and waiting the year for what we now have is the key control. And the key control is the key to the system. This, this baby is the interface, it's the heartbeat, it truly does make it beyond just a great powered speaker system. It makes it a great audio system. It's now simply plug and play any source you want. This is so great. First of all, let me, I mean, it's, it's gorgeous as you can see. Form factor is just phenomenal. It's not that much bigger than an iPhone, iPhone 7 here. And it's about the, about the same length, a little thicker. Beautiful piece. Key really outdid themselves with this, but with all their designs, they're gorgeous. OLED screen, selectable inputs. Here we got coax, optical, USB, XLR. You can do presets. Everything I told you about the the rotary switches in the back for boundary and uh, 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 boundary proximity and uh, the equalization can now be done in the key control. The second you plug in the key control, it becomes it overrides. You can do so much more. You can dim these front lights. You can shut them off. You can have the speak. You can shut the speakers off. You can have it do an auto off. Uh, auto start on signal. There's literally, I'm, I'm not going to scratch the surface of what it's capable of doing in this video. But, how do you connect it? Ethernet cable. Ethernet cable to the key control, and now it's on. It's powered over the Ethernet via the speaker. And it's, it's a uh, you, it's, it's AES EBU over Cat5 is what we're running here. And volume control here. You can switch the inputs. You connect it via Ethernet to the back of the speaker. So now on the back of the speaker you have your choice. Do you want to use those XLRs just as before for a digital XLR? or a digital AES EBU input or analog XLR. Well, analog XLR is perfect if you're running the phono stage. You're running if you run a phono stage, XLR right into the speaker, analog. Volume control right here once you collect switch it. So USB optical coax. Where do you find these? You'll find them 
right on the back, you got USB, you've got toss link, and you've got your coax SPDIF input. Phenomenal. Now you've got any input that you would need. SPDIF, toss link, USB, AES EBU, or analog XLR inputs. So if you need more toss links, no problem. Go out and buy a toss link splitter, stack it in front of it. Or what about that HDMI input and integrating this into a two channel theater center where you've got your plasma on the wall or your flat screen. I guess plasmas are outdated now, but your flat screen on the wall. And then you've got your Roku, your DirecTV, your Apple TV, and your, your um, Blu-ray player. No HDMI. Well, we've got the solution. A little key digital HDMI switcher. 4K compatible. A few hundred bucks. No big deal. You can do Blu-ray. Direct TV, uh, uh, Roku, Apple TV. Take this to your flat screen. You've got a spit if output right into the key control. And this little device is auto sensing. So as you see, there's really there there's no way that you cannot use it now. It's at a source. And if you need to add an accessory for additional sources. No problem whatsoever. So, this as you see is wired to the speaker. Does that mean that you have to have a wire going across your floor, your living room floor, to be able to control the volume, to mute it, to change inputs? No. Here look, we have a little IR receiver. Grab a remote of your choice. I like to use the little Apple TV remote because it's slick. Then, cool, like the key system. And I can sit here and control the volume. Up, down, I mute it. I can change the inputs. This, my friends is a system. It's a complete system. It's a cool system. It's one of the best sounding systems that you can get for any amount of money. It plays from 25,000 Hertz down to 20 Hertz, plus or minus a half a dB. It's the speakers that the mastering engineers and recording engineers are using. This is absolutely gorgeous and the performance is off the charts. So I fully endorse and recommend the Key 3 audio system with the key control.